to do a shift body forever? What do you have to do to keep it up with that nice looking good shape body? You have to eat right, you have to drink right, you have to exercise, exercise. you have to work out. You see, you didn't pay for it. You have a new body, you have a new life Jesus gave you. You didn't pay for it, but you have to work out, exercise, spiritual maturity. Yeah? Make sense? Yes. And there's two ways of doing it. Gladly, you are happy every day you got this new body, good shape, new good looking body. And what else can I do to keep it up? And you are gladly doing some, some exercise will be very hard and treacherous. And sometimes you don't feel like doing it, but you are happy to do it. Or you're going to do it because it costs so and so so much money. He sacrifices his vacation and sacrifices his uh, dental um, implants and for you to have this good body, therefore I gotta work out. And you will do it by obligation. If you don't, he's going to grumble. He's going to get after you. So you gotta do it and do it and do it. Are you gonna be happy? Not really. And then soon, you are going to stop doing it because it's, it's an obligation. You hate it. But in order for you to keep it up, you have to do it. That's no good. And someday you're going to lose it, you're going to gain back all your lifestyle and free soon. You don't even recognize you once had a new body. It is like that. That's why Apostle Paul asked, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Fear doesn't mean fear, fear. Fear means uh, reverence. <coughs> Think about what God has done to give you a new life, give you a new body, how much He sacrificed. And because of that, you have a brand new sparkling life you want to work it out. You want to do it. That's what it means. Work out your salvation. Not, you didn't pay for it. You don't, work, you don't work for the salvation. You work out the one you already have. Got it? Got it. How? How do we do that? How do we work out? Apostle Paul says, imitators of Christ's humility. What's a humility? Humility is not you being wishy-washy, you being weak, low self-esteem. Humility does not mean you being a dormant. Humility means other centers. Humility means that you forget about yourself. What about me? Forget that for a second. Because you care about others too much. You don't think about what's in it for me. That's a humility. You know, what's the opposite of humility? Pride, selfish, self-centeredness, boastful. You know, when you meet people, uh, who walks in the room, they act like they own the world, they own the world, right? And they think, they, they act like they got it all together. They are, they are suffering from insecurity, <clears throat> low self-esteem. And they cover up their insecurity, low self-esteem, with the pride and boastfulness. People who are secure, who knows who they are, they can be humble. They care for other people. They do not do all the time what's in it for me. 
you know, our Lord Jesus never were, was um, boastful, prideful, right? Elder. Was he? No. Totally opposite. He was humble. I mean, he came from heaven to earth to save us. He humbled himself to come to the earth. Humbled himself to the position of the lowest position in the world, all my world, a servant. And he knelt down before his disciples washed their feet. He could do that because he knew who he was and who he knew who he is and is to come. He knew his purpose for being here on earth. That's how he could have ever done that. You know, I talked to a guy who said that he's been praying. He recognized that he is so prideful. So he's been praying to God, please, please, please take my pride away. But God didn't take my pride away. So he's been going on and on and on and about how come God, you don't take my pride away. And then one day God told him, it is the pride is not the thing that I take it from you. It's the thing that you need to give it up. It's you need to give it up. It's your choice. You know, a lot of times we don't feel like humble. I don't, you know, feel like to be humble. That's okay. You see, feeling has nothing to do with the humility. Humility, you choose to do. It's the way of thinking, way of acting. Even though you don't feel like to be humble, you don't feel like to exercise humility, but you choose to humble because you know who you are. Because you are God's most high, God's child. And that's why. And why you, when you exercise humility, humble, then other people are gonna like you, right? Do you love uh, someone who is elder? No. Prideful? No. You like someone? Who is a humble, right? So you gonna have you gonna have more people like you, and God's going to like you too. That's how you can be a friend like Jesus to others. Think about others first, what their needs are before you think about what's in it for me. Got it? So what are the good practical examples of uh, exercising, imitating Christ-like uh, humility in our daily lives? Apostle Paul says what? Do everything without grumbling and arguing. We know that, right? Why do we grumble? Why do I grumble? I grumble a lot, <laughs> especially when it comes to my dog, PK. I do everything for her, you know. I give her food and take her to the bed and my haircut and all that. But yeah, whenever Teresa, where is Teresa? Whenever Teresa shows up and she, her hair is spinning like a crazy, <laughs> And express her, her love for her is greater than her love for me. I grumble every time I see that. <laughs> because I believe I deserve better treatment from this doggy. Right? <laughs> That's why we grumble. Think about it. You did something very nice for so and so, never say thank you, never enough, um, and then you saw her doing something else to other people, huh, 
Pride. 